there is a classic limit that you should know. Because of the way I'm presenting this material, I'm not showing any proofs. This doesn't really have anything to do with one-sided limits. It's a two-sided limit that I'm going to give you. The limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x divided by x equals 1. And here x needs to be measured in radians. Proving this limit is true is a bit of an exercise, we can't use our quotient rule. If we try to use our quotient rule, we get a division by zero error. I'm not going to give the formal proof, as I think I mentioned. But if we take a look at Desmos, we can hopefully convince ourselves it's true. Here's the sine of x divided by x. Here's 1. It sure looks like as x approaches 0, this curve is approaching 1. And if we create a table, it certainly seems to be true. This isn't actually a one here. It's just so close to one that Desmos is rounding it. Likewise, if we approach zero from the negative direction, again, this isn't actually actually one, but it's so close to one that Desmos is rounding it to one. What's the significance of this limit? The significance of this limit is that if a fraction is close to one, the numerator and the denominator must be very close. So if x is close to zero, the sine of x is very close to x. So, for example, the sine of 0 0.001 is very close to just being 0 0.001. If you're rounding to fewer than 10 decimal places, they're indistinguishable. So this limit is frequently used as an approximation tool. You are in some applied setting, say astronomy or optics, where you're working with very small angles and you're taking a you're using trigonometry and you're taking the sine of a very small angle. And you say, well, because of this, the sine of the angle and the angle are indistinguishable. And instead of using a trigonometric function, which is complicated, we can simply we can approximate it, sorry, with x, which is very simple. So that's kind of how this stuff shows up in practice.